Today, I'm going to be walking you through the steps to create this rainbow mandala. So first, I just have a 4x4 canvas that I have primed with black paint. And I'm just going to draw a line down that center. And then I'm going to use a protractor to get two spots evenly spaced from that center line. And it ended up doing uh, 20 degrees off on each side. So from 90, I just went to 70. And once I got those lines, I just used those to place a line down to the corner to create these three lines going up through the canvas to kind of give me a couple of guidelines to go off of as I'm working. Next, I just used a compass and did a lot of different little semicircles on here just to kind of help me stay true and keep it as even as possible. The spacing on these doesn't really matter. I had really no plan going in other than it is going to be a rainbow theme. So here I am just loading this first little corner dot up with a lot of paint. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take this little needle tool that I have. I have a link to this in um, down in the comments. And I am just going to slowly spread this paint around to fill in this area. So I left my paint really thick because I still wanted the dot to have some texture to it. Not to be super raised, but I just didn't want it to fall flat. So I take my time here just to make sure that I just get the paint exactly where I want it to be without it falling off the sides and without crossing over that line. So just take your time and be patient with it. Don't try to rush this part. Um, and it actually uh, turned out pretty well. So the paint was a little uneven after I had gotten it spread out. So I could try to even it up a little bit with my tool. And eventually I decided that I would just give it a couple of taps to help it settle. And you can see that it's a nice even covered dot. So next, I'm just going to take a large end of a dotting tool and I'm just going to place a red dot on each of these lines. And this is going to be a rainbow piece. And I am using the same colors that I mixed up in a previous video. So that I didn't add anything additional to my paint, but I'm just using Liquitex and I'm thinning it down with pouring medium to get the right consistency to get these nice rounded like M&M style dots. Here, I just placed some dots in between those previous dots, and that was the tool size that I used. In this video, all the tool sizes are going to be at the end after I complete that section. Um, I just wasn't sure which tools I was going to use because I was being very careful to pick tools where I would be able to complete the dot on the sides. So if you need to go up or down a size, I suggest you do that so that you don't have your dots like rolling off the side of the canvas. Next, I just went with a smaller tool to kind of fill in that space. And then I decided to do two um, little yellow dots, one on each side. And I'm pretty sure I'm using the smaller end of the dotting tool for this section. Um, for the sides, I only placed the one because that's what would fit. And here I ended up going in and realizing that that dot was just a little too big for that space. And I wasn't going to be able to fix in another dot without them touching. So I just took a damp Q-tip and removed it. And then I was a little impatient there. I didn't wait for it to completely dry. You really should wait for it to completely dry before placing your next dots. I got lucky and it didn't mess up, but yeah. <laughs> then I ended up going with this pattern where I do the bigger dots on top of the two dots. And again, I'm picking tools that would have fit on the sides. And then here I'm kind of showing you how I kind of measure it out to kind of see which tool I'm going to use next. And I decided to do another little yellow dot in between all of these. And again, this is the tool size that I used for that dot that I just placed. 
and then I moved on to the green. And I kept this pattern going for the rest of this little section, just kind of filling in this little part with whatever size dots works for you and your piece. Um, for me, the green dots ended up being that size. Next, I went up for a larger tool and just placed that on top of the two dots. And so that's kind of the pattern that I went with from this part on. Um, going into this one, I didn't have a plan other than it was going to be rainbow working through the colors. So, you know, if you can fit more dots or less, you just adjust it to whatever works for your piece. I'm just kind of showing you what I did and um, the tools that I used so that you can recreate this one. Um, but don't worry if you can't quite get your dots to fit on the sides or if going down a size tool looks weird on yours, then you know you just do what you want to do. Also, you can also dot on the side and only get a half dot um, without it dripping down the side if your paint is thicker. So you can always do that as well. But when I was designing this one, I specifically chose tools to where it would line up um, really nicely on the sides. On these bigger blue dots, I am making sure to load them up with extra paint so that they will be nice and round once they dry. So with any tutorial, I think it's um, good to remember that based off the tools that you're using, the size piece that you're painting on, and just how much pressure you put on a tool will really determine um, your dot size. So you have to take that in account when you are creating your piece. And, you know, sometimes with these tools, I'm not pushing down all the way. Actually, I, in order to get my dots nice and rounded, I actually don't let these, the tool touch completely. I just let the paint get pulled off of the tool to create that dot. So that's something to keep in mind uh, as well. So sometimes you can go to a smaller tool and end up getting the same size dot that I got um, because you're pushing the tool all the way down. So next is purple and I left poor indigo out um, in this rainbow piece, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it happens. So I ended up going uh, just with the purple and again, just loading these dots up. And there you are, I'm just placing them on top of those two dots, but it's also kind of in the center of my guidelines in the middle. So next I decided to do some walking the dots and I decided it would be fun to do a rainbow pattern going all the way around. So starting with the purple and just going backwards. So when you look at it, once it's complete, it's going to actually look like a rainbow with red being at the top. So I started with purple and I am using the larger end of the dotting tool for that first dot and then the smaller for the sides. Um, when you are doing your walking the dots, just take your time, go slowly, don't try to rush it. Make sure you have a lot of paint on your dotting tool. And yeah, be sure to breathe. A lot of people like to hold their breath during this part, but it's actually easier if you breathe. And don't worry about how many dots I'm doing on the side. You do whatever works for you. And um, with time, you'll be able to get your dots closer together. So don't, don't worry about the exact number of dots that I'm placing around. Uh, next, I went up with a slightly larger dotting tool and I used the large end for the first green dot. And then I'm going to use the smaller end um, to do the rest of the walking of the dots. Again, we're just making sure to take our time and uh, just be patient with this process. It takes some time to get the spacing right for walking the dots, but once you do, it kind of becomes a muscle memory for you and it becomes a lot easier with practice. Uh, next, I use the same tool and just loaded that first dot up uh, to create a slightly larger dot um, than my green dot. And then I, um, I had a couple little air bubbles there, so I just kind of poked them uh, with my dotting tool to pop them while the paint was still wet. And then I went in 
with my smaller pink dotting tool with a larger end to do the first row of the first the first dot of the walking the dots in that tool and then I switched back to my previous tool to do the small dots with the small end of that dotting tool so I did that because with yellow you want to be sure that you have a lot of paint on your tool when you get down to the bottom so it makes it easier sometimes to use multiple tools to work your way down so here I actually end up messing up and I left it in the video for you guys to see so for whatever reason I was not happy with that spacing and I decided to fix it but right there I don't know if you saw it was hard to see I actually touched that dot with my pinky so it kind of flattened it out a little bit but it was still wet so i was able to go in and add a little bit of water with a q-tip and then take my needle and kind of spread it around a little bit and it kind of smoothed it out but it's still indented a little in the center but that's okay because i'm going to add top dots so that's all i had to do to fix this one by adding a little bit of water it made the dot wet again so i can just kind of try to smooth it out with the q-tip and then with the needle and it actually worked really well i was afraid it wouldn't and i would end up having to take that dot off and try to replace it which i would have done after all my paint was dry but yeah that's a little trick if you happen to do something like that uh, you can always try that to see if it's going to work if i wasn't going to do top dots i would have just had to let it dry and then pop it off and then repaint it. So for the orange, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the yellow section, just being careful that my dots are really thick uh, so that you won't be able to see the black underneath. And you can see that um, I just take those orange dots right up into where the yellows meet. And that's where we're gonna stop. So here, I'm gonna show you again that I just make my dots go right up into that little corner that we created with the yellow. If you're walking the dots are a little bit larger than mine, you may have done this with your yellow section and that's fine too. Just once you get to the point where your spacing doesn't allow anymore, just try to make that little V shape and it will work out just fine. Next, of course, we went to the red. And so we're almost done with this section, but I am just making sure to load this first dot up with a lot of paint. And you notice that I didn't go up in uh, dotting tool size because I wanted to make sure that in these little Vs, my dots didn't get too big. So I ended up using the same tool as the previous row and did them in the same style as the previous row. So that way my um, spacing would kind of look the same and it would kind of just bring the whole piece together. Now for the red, I had enough room to actually take these dots all the way around and I did. It was a little tight here, but I was able to make them go all the way. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just do the same thing as you do with the V and just go till you get to the edge. And I just kept going with the same type of pattern that we had been doing. And with my um, red, orange, and yellows, I don't have a lot of trouble with bleeding through because with the Liquitex paint, it is very highly pigmented. So it makes it where once you do these smaller dots, you usually don't see the black uh, unless your paint starts getting really thin. So as long as you have enough paint on your tool, you're not gonna see the black through if you're using any type of brand that is really highly pigmented. Also check the opacity of those colors. Um, I'm making sure to use paint that is really opaque, so I'm not going to have to worry about the black being seen with those tiny dots. Next, I decided to do some swipes. So in this section, I actually um, set this canvas aside for a couple weeks because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do next or if it was done or if I was just going to do something in the corner or... I, I had, you know, I do that a lot. I would just set a piece off to the side and wait for it to speak to me. And eventually it decided that it really wanted some swipes. So I am just taking a large end of a dotting tool and placing a dot and my paint's really thick here. So I am slowly moving 
that dot just spreading it out with a needle. And for this, I chose to do a needle because I knew I was going to do a really tight area and I wanted to get as crisp of a line as possible. And I find that using the needle is just the best way. It's not the fastest, but it just tends to give you a better look. So with this, with my paint being thick, I have to take my time and sometimes I have to go over it a couple of times, but you wanna try to get the swipe as smooth as you possibly can now. And once it dries, it will be nice and smooth for you. So if it looks really lumpy, I would just add some more paint and keep working with it until you get a nice smooth look. And then you'll be really satisfied with the way your swipe looks once it dries. So after I did this blue section, you notice I'm not doing anything on those sides yet because I'm not really sure what I want to do there yet. So I was just kind of waiting until I could make a decision and I knew what I wanted to do for this section. So I just kept working on these three spaces until I came up with a plan for the sides. So again, I just did the same thing with the green, just kind of building up uh, that little arc shape. I'm sticking with the lines that I made um, with my compass. And I did that to kind of help me visualize this section to make sure I kind of kept the shape that I was looking for. So by making those little lines with my compass, it gave me that little arc that I can kind of use as a guideline for what I want to do next. You can always just eyeball it and sketch it out that way, but I was just trying to show you a different way um, to do it. So you can see that I'm just being very meticulous here because I know however this looks at this point is what the swipe's gonna look like when it dries. So I really take my time here. Even though I left this video slow, this is still sped up. So uh, just really take your time and get those um, nice and smooth and crisp. And yeah, um, these swipes, uh, they do take a lot of time to kind of get the technique down and it just takes practice so um i'm still working on mine so you know just be patient with yourself when it comes to the swipes so of course next was yellow and i decided just to do a big yellow swipe and just bring it right down into the middle and i made this one a little bit wider on the sides than our previous swipes uh, just to kind of fill in the space. So basically I just did whatever size work to kind of fill in the space that I had left to kind of complete this little section out. So next I finally made a decision on the side and I decided to do a little purple swipe going down until I get to the edge of the canvas. So I had to do a lot of extra paint to be able to make it go down that far. Um, again, just taking your time with it. I always load that dot up a couple of times to make sure I have a lot of paint so that I can just slowly pull that paint down. And then I decided to go ahead and do another little blue swipe. Slightly different than what I did on the middle section because I wanted to kind of make it look more complete and not that it was missing the other swipes. So I ended up just doing a little blue swipe right beside it just to kind of fill in that space. After my paint was completely dry, I just went in with a wet Q-tip and removed all of my guy lines. I had used a Crayola watercolor pencil and I found that that is the best thing to use. <laughs> I had tried chalk pencils before in the past and I had different issues with different brands. But the Crayola brand, I have not, watercolor pencil, I have not had any issues removing lines afterwards. Next, I just took all my primary colors and just added a little bit of white to them to make my top dot color. And then I just took my time and slowly placed a dot right on the center of that previous dot. So I just did a lighter purple on top of the dark, darker purple. And again, I still loaded these dots up. They're still pretty big. So I still um, added like extra paint to them to make sure that they would dry nice and round. Next, I did the same thing with the blue and your tool size here. You can just kind of look at the dot that you've created and just pick a smaller tool. Um, different people have different preferences. Some people like their 
top dots to be really large, so I'm like I'm smaller. I tend to do like this rule of thirds <laughs> type of thing. So I end up usually picking a tool that is like a third smaller than the previous dot. And uh, that usually works really well for me. So that's kind of what I've always um, done. Sometimes if I'm going for a different look, I may do something differently. Um, but for the most part, that's kind of what I do. I even went ahead and put top dots on these little red dots as well. So next I added even more white and this is after my paint has dried. I went in and added another top dot on top of these and remember that first purple dot on the bottom um, that was the one that I had touched with my pinky and the top dot completely ended up covering that up so I never had to go back and fix that dot other than what I did in the video. So I got really lucky <laughs> and I was really happy about that. But yeah, so I just continue to uh, just place the lighter color on top to just kind of give it a little highlight. This adds a lot of depth as well. And another thing you can do is you could always, you know, put the uh, blue top dot on top of the purple, um, a green on top of the blue and kind of work the rainbow up. Uh, you can always do that as well as another option. Um, I think that was my original plan and I just kind of forgot about it <laughs> by the time I actually painted this. So uh, you can always change it up and do something a little different. I think I ended up going with this direction because I really wanted to keep the rainbow looking like a rainbow um, from the purple going to the red and the walking the dot section. So I didn't want to bring the blue into the center of the rainbow. So I think that's why I kept it the way I did. And uh, this is what the finished piece looks like, guys. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And uh, please subscribe and share my channel. Thanks, guys.